as it is with the one percent of the world for example owning a lot of money and other people starving does not work that's why people all over the world stand up and what changes in the world but there has uh, something has to happen for the world to gain maturity we have to understand why the world is the way it is and what drives us to, to this world Our outer world always reflects our inner world. So the greed of the companies that live of starving people finds its root in ourselves. What is this root? Why is this happening? When we are little children we learn on some point our name. Everybody talks to us with a name. And as we understand that this name is us, we start to identify ourselves with something. We learn concepts of mine and yours with stuff, things we, we own, as well as with ideas and we grow and we collect and collect and collect collect opinions, collect stories and we always identify this part of ourselves that does identify our mind or this part of our mind is not our whole being but it is the one that we identify ourselves with and it wants more and it wants to have something to be alive because if it would let go of everything it, the construct the concept of ourselves would not exist we learn that more is better and more for me means less for you maybe or more for you means less for me spiritual practices are often to achieve liberation from that part of the self. But is there maybe another way that we can explain to this part of ourselves that another way to live gives us actually more and satisfies even the needs of this part of our mind without needing to get rid of it? Let's see what, what we want. What is it that we want or that our self wants? We want to have maybe security. That's, I think, a very important point. We want to have comfort. We want to have relationships. We want to... Actually, I think we all want to have a fulfilling life. Can we achieve that? Let's see. Uh, there are people who control, who have a huge hunger for power, we may not forget that, we have to understand that. Why do people have these, this great need to control? I think actually it starts out with fear or protection of themselves, because if you control everything, you are very secure, like you are in the belly of your, of your mother where all the needs go back to, I think, to the great trauma of birth, maybe? Yeah. But we can understand that this great sensation of power that includes the, the strength or the energy of a lot of people can be achieved in another way. Not only by controlling this Let's, let's make a picture of another world and then see what it brings. If the whole world sees itself as, as one, actually, because we, we definitely are here together. 
if we start to live, or let's let's go to the goal first. If we would live uh, in a way that we accept each other totally and support the, the passions of everyone, with with a sense of you are a part of my bigger self, of my family here on Earth, we actually would enrich our own lives and also we, we would have the security because the whole world would care for us. What, what this world This, this energy of the t being together needs to be to be to be real. It's another another sense of of self. Actually, if we understand that that supporting another being means supporting ourselves, we get richer if we do something for others because. Everyone is unique and as we, when we control somebody or suppress, we, we suppress the expressive potential of this person, but we have the control and the security. If we get the, set that person free and accept it totally, we actually get the richness of the expression of this person to be a part of the whole world. How, how do we create a world where everyone shares and everybody accepts each other. How can we live like that? Is it, is it possible? One big fear of the people, of every human being, is a fear of separation. The fear of being separated from the rest of the people, from, from friendship, from joy and from love and from the fulfilling of our needs the fear of death totally. how can we how can we let go of this fear how can we grow over this fear or how can we understand this fear this fear exists we cannot say this fear does not exist so let's share everything and love Love is all we need, though it is. Uh, it's easy actually. First, we have to get rid of the concept of right and wrong and normal and unnormal within ourselves so that we accept ourselves. And when we stop to, to, to judge others as normal or not normal, and if we stop to accept, accept right and wrong or let go of all our shoulds and should not, we actually are free and set everyone else free to be themselves and we get rid of all the walls between us that we built over these, all these years and finally can, can experience real intimacy easily. I want to say here something, a story. There's, there's a, a group of islands somewhere on this world where monkeys are living. And these monkeys are living on, on more of these islands, but these islands are so far away that they cannot see each other and cannot swim over or something. And uh, man uh, observed these monkeys for a long, long time, hundreds of years. Uh, or hundred years maybe I can't tell the exact numbers now. So on one day 
this big monkey mama, mother, they eat potatoes, all they eat is potatoes, or most that they eat. One day this, uh, this monkey mother took the potato and went to the water. And she, she washed the potato in the salt water and then she ate it. And she, she recognized that this tastes a lot better. And so she did it uh, every time she ate potatoes from then on. And the other monkeys copied her and they did it too. But the strange thing that happened is, not long ago, maybe one or two years later, the monkeys on the other islands started to do the same. The concept that explains this, because there can be no communication between these monkeys. And they did eat the, the potatoes unsalted for a long time. And suddenly, monkeys can impossibly see that or hear that started to do the same. The concept that explains that is called morphogenetic field. It's like global consciousness. The species share the consciousness. And as some, as one person or one being of this species started to do something, this egg was, was safe in the morphogenetic field of these monkeys. We as humanity have a morphogenetic field too. We call it global consciousness maybe. That's why the younger generation always learns things more easily. Like the first computer, the, the first generation with computers and the second generation with computers. They learn it much more easily because somebody has learned it before. So we have to understand that every action that we take has an influence on actually every human being. So when we change ourselves or we change just one action of ourselves, we actually prepare a way for others to follow without the need that they see us. So if we see that a world where, where we accept everybody, that what is necessary to, to feel this community and the, the connectedness or the connection between each other, if we want to experience that, being one family, being supported, supporting, everybody doing what everybody likes to do or can do, like organizing or science, science or talking or teaching or building or whatever one, one person wants to do. And if we want a world where we where we make others happy because we see that if everybody is happy that we are so happy if we see that we want to live in a world where there's no concept of right or wrong and everybody gets totally accepted so what means uh, that there will be no shame anymore because there is no concept of wrong in the mind so every shame gets deleted from the world and a lot of fear gets deleted from the world. We, we actually would not have crime and we would share because we have enough to have If we see that we want that, we can, we can look how we give this actually to ourselves inside ourselves. And if one person just to accept itself, him or herself totally, every thought that comes up, every shame, every concept of right or wrong, every should and should not, we make a huge step to that world and we can actually every time a thought that we don't like or a reaction of ourselves like some issues or something come up and we accept ourselves lovingly, we can be happy because we are humanitarians at that moment. This is a big part to a mature world. Acceptance, total acceptance of ourselves, 
and each and every one that we see, we have to understand here the total acceptance of the person and total support of their essence and of their, their passions or their talents. And the unique beauty does not mean blind following or supporting every action of every human. We can accept and if we can, can love a murderer, the person. with a nation or a religion but we see ourselves as humans or as part of this planet we are all here together anyway there's no reason for not seeing that violence does not solve anything when we see we are here together we are here together and the more we support each other the more happens to, to fill our life to fill the life of earth to, to grow to expand in every idea in every unique way everybody has something and if they do not find it we can love them and say try everything you want maybe you find something maybe not but this planet is a planet where we live friendly and enjoy it and we have enough food to feed the world seven times now we just maybe have to change the way it gets to the people so Yeah, authority, yeah, authority. We have to, to understand that we are human. And maybe to think about what we are doing, to reflect, and to stop, stop supporting an act that is harming our family, our planet, or our bigger self, which is uh, we just stop supporting violence. We have this. I heard the saying once. Uh, how can we? How can we uh, imagine there's war and nobody goes? What if there's somebody who says, "Take this weapon and shoot it," and you say, "No." And then the person says, well then I get somebody who shoots you or gets you in prison. But there's nobody findable who does that. We just say no. How do we get that confidence? I mean, that's a question everybody has to ask himself. Can I do that? Do I want to do that? But if you see the effect that it has, and no, that with every loving no to that, and every exception of, of ourselves and others, we actually change not only ourselves but the whole world. And we are very good about it. And if we do process the, the, the exercise or the, the practice of accepting ourselves, we gain a lot of confidence. Support for this world to exist is actually start caring for each other I think in this world there has to be time to spend in the community regularly in the, in, the, in the final version of this world where everybody cares for each other but gives space if somebody has a bad day or a bad feeling but feels the acceptance of his fellow beings so that there is no 
no more alienation. And that's a sense of a sense of all together expand. So what what I wanna say with that is every time we're happy, we can be happy because we are happy for all of us. Every time we accept somebody who's angry at us and do not support this anger by giving in to it or focusing on anger but accepting the person but just stopping the change of chain of anger we can be happy because we did we did a, a, a work for humanity and with every one of us doing one decision like that a day we, we speed up that are sure to come actually as we think that there was once one Mahatma Gandhi or one Martin Luther King and now we look around and we see a worldwide occupied movement and we know that every single action of every of these beings speeds up the process for every other being that there will eventually be no other way than this world because we are so many and we have the internet but with every one of us now understanding maybe that, that accepting, which is so easy to just say I accept you, is healthy and maybe gaining much enough confidence or just saying to ourselves, no, I want to stand up and change the world because there are people starving, but others have billions of people, but without supporting thoughts of feelings of anger or hate, inside our global consciousness. If we understand that every feeling we have against these people is a neutral feeling without aim for everyone. So if, if we just stop every conflict and just say yes to humanity, but no to the way things are working on this planet, we, we actually create a new world. But we, we have to, to grow up to ourselves we have to take our own power too. We have to find our no and our yes. We have to be honest to ourselves. We have to say, is this what I'm doing? Manageable with my purpose or my truth? What do I want to do? What do I want to see? Is what I'm doing? Is that what I'm doing serving this? And we can look who else do we support? So I, I, I would like to, yeah, to just see, I mean the, the world is already changing, we see the Occupy movement, we see it worldwide, we see it in every, in every city all these alternative healings and bookshops full of body, mind, spirit books, maybe you buy some, maybe you, maybe you invest or contribute to your own development of self. Because without changing the self, there will be no change of the world. You can change and say, we make it different, but with the same people, how is there going to be change? I, I personally like to start the day with just feeling love. I don't create love or think I have to love everyone, but just sitting there and feeling the love that I feel. By doing that I know that I bring love to every human being, that I bring love to earth and it makes me happy. And everyone can do that. And everyone can accept everyone and everyone can understand that conflict with a with a with a with a being that does maybe cool things helps to stand keep conflict on this world. But we can give a no. We can stand in front of a door and say you will not go in there and build pharmaceutical products that kill people. But I love you. But I will not let you go through there if you have this confidence. But you can also just practice acceptance. By that you are helping a lot. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> That's actually the message. And uh, big, big big focus here is for me to erase every concept of right or wrong 
every concept of should or should not inside of ourselves and in our world, every concept of normal or not normal. Because only if we erase these concepts, we can grow together, we can feel our whole humanity as one, because we break down the walls and see ourselves as humans. And we can stop doing that easily by just identifying these thoughts. If we see a thought come up, like, should do that or I should do that or whatever, we just see the thought and say, there you are, I see you, you are not me anymore. But you don't have to fight against this thought. You can just say, this thought, I'm not identifying with you anymore because I can see you. You are working automatically, maybe. All right? Yeah. Uh, a nice word is possible and I think this will ultimately lead to the world where we are one. We have enough food, we have enough of everything. If the money goes maybe a bit somewhere from billionaires, there's a bit more balance and harmony.